you ask and you shall receive. Ladies, gentlemen, and everything is queen. Hello, welcome to the channel. Today we're doing more Irish history content. Now I've been told, like I did a poll the other day, what content do you guys want? Where are you from? What are you interested in? And I booked together the UK and Ireland. And y'all were saying, favor, we're not the UK. We're talking about Ireland specifically. We'll want Irish content. Obviously I'm gonna bless you. Now, I don't know if I'm gonna do any like food um, reactions. What's that Genghis pie or something that y'all eat? That does not look appetizing to me. However, I will do historical reactions, accents, and just any other content y'all want. So make sure you comment down below what kind of Irish content specifically you want me to react to. But let's get into the history of Ireland. I know it's gonna, probably gonna mention the Troubles. Um, I don't know how far back this is going to date. The furthest back, like the farther back we go, the more interesting in my opinion, because we can see literally how we've developed into the modern age. But yeah, let's get into the video. Here is a uh, reaction to the history of Ireland. Let's get it. And Do I hit? To... Celt. This is Europe, and this is the island of Ireland, and here's the Republic An of island. Ireland. Now let's go, shall we? Green, isn't it? Indeed, it's not known as the mm. Armored Isle for nothing, and the story of Ireland begins as shivering figures first stepped ashore during the waning days of the Ice Age. For huh. many a century they lived as hunter-gatherers, feasting on salmon and chestnuts, until someone figured out the ground was really good and started growing stuff. Ireland Potatoes. entered into that puzzling phase so many ancient cultures around the world stepped into, that of building big things. The most famous <laughs> Irish big thing is that Newgrange. rotund riddle known as Newgrange. Built oh. around 3200 BC, long before the pyramids, there's scores of theories as to its possible Ooh. purpose, but this whopping circuit mound of earth and stone remains a mystery. During it still makes me wonder, like, how are these people, even the pyramids in Egypt or um, Lebanon or wherever the heck, how were these individual people, and I don't imagine that they're super bulky or, because again, they're hunter gatherers, they aren't like feasting on protein all day, every day. How are they able to build and carve something this intricate? Like the walls, the rocks placed specifically and shaped. Like it's very miraculous the things that people in the past were able to accomplish. For purpose, but this whopping circuit mound of earth and stone remains a mystery. During the Bronze Age, Ireland fell under the influence of the Beaker culture. Beaker. But those days are still too inscrutable for us to understand, and are yet another long mist shrouded enigma. Things get a little huh. clearer in the Iron Age, which coincided with the arrival of the Celts, whose presence becomes increasingly distinct after the 300 BC mark. Yeah, because I feel like whenever you, as a foreigner anyway, when you think of Irish history, you definitely think of Celtic, um, for some reason, redheads and the, the cross. I don't know if it's Protestant, Catholic or what, but you definitely imagine those three things. It was the Celtic people who forged the culture and consciousness of Ireland, as well as its language, and the country's name, Era, derives Era. from a Celtic goddess, Eru. Anyway, Celtic goddess? Ireland I was not Christians. a unified state, but instead an assortment of rival regions called Tuha, ruled over by chieftains. Again, however, not much is known of those times, as the Irish had no writing, and there seems to have been something of a dark age, concurrent with the centuries of Roman occupation of Britannia next door. Now, oh. while this island of Britain would inflict a lot of misery on Ireland in the future, the I Irish were among the peoples who invaded and ravaged British settlements in the closing days of Roman rule. Little did those Irish pirates know how their raids would alter their island forever. For one mm. day in the 400s, they captured a Christian teenager and brought him to Ireland as a slave. Some years later, mm. he escaped, but after a vision beckoned him back, he returned. Of course, this was the famous St. Patrick, and his years of preaching saw Ireland effectively Christianized. He became the patron saint of Ireland, and his feast huh. day is celebrated around the world, typically in a very un- So homie went from a slave to someone that everybody celebrates we even celebrate um what do you call it saint patrick's day here most of us though don't even know what it like really means we just wear a ball of green and have four leaf clovers but no saint patrick was like a real person that kind of let me not go there we'll just say he was a guy that um developed the culture saint-like manner. With the cross came literacy and the Latin alphabet, and the Irish began writing down and preserving their wonderful old legends. Nice. During the chaotic age of migration and invasion that accompanied the fall of the Western Roman Empire, many priceless oh, texts were copied and kept safe by Irish monks in remote locales, like this island of sharp, craggy, rugged rock known as Skellig Michael, and what marvels of artistic craftsmanship Ooh. they were. In 795, Vikings began looting around the Irish coast, and the 800s found them setting up permanent fortified settlements. If the North but it seemed like the Celts were the early Vikings, so why didn't the Celts fight off the Vikings from invading? 
Someone let me know. Osman hoped to one day reign over all Ireland. That dream was shattered in 1014 when the forces of King Bri and Boruva, Brian Boru, defeated them at the Battle of Clontarf. But a cloud mm. crept closer to Era, and a century after the French Viking Normans had conquered England, they set their sights on Ireland. Norman boots Dang. squelched ashore in 1169, and the trouble Ugh. and tension between England and Ireland begins in earnest at this point. The Normans oh, built castles and brought English law, but wholeheartedly adopted Irish ways and became so Irish that to ensure their progeny's names weren't lost in the Celtic genetic tide, they adopted Gaelic surname indicators like Fitz, as in Fitzroy or Fitzgerald. Mm. Now, English Fitzgerald. rule over Ireland was far from absolute. They did not rule over all of it and constantly fought against the Irish. And after the Black Death of the mid-1300s, English territory was reduced to the greater Dublin area. After mm. a rebellion in the 1530s, England's Henry VIII decided to reassert English control. So the next con- Isn't he the guy who killed a bunch of his wives? The English kings weren't. Mm. Henry VIII decided to reassert English control. So the next conquest of Ireland commenced, and the Irish were not happy about it. An yeah, armed no, resistance get out of led here. by Hugh O'Neill saw the vicious Nine Years' War, in Oy, which the English nine years? triumphed and went on to impose their authority over all Ireland. The fiercely Dang. Catholic Irish resented this Protestant English intrusion and were mm. only infuriated the more by the English crown pinching Irish land and putting Protestants in it. These were called plantations, and the biggest and most important one was located up in the Ulster region, which is where today's Northern Ireland is found. Yeah. Persistent discrimination roused Irish anger, or ire, aye, you might aye, say, aye. which erupted in rebellion in 1641. Led this is like making me think of American history all over again. Like this hard hand, iron fist, trying to like implement all these um, rules on top of you and tax you and change your way of life. And it's like, no, you aren't even here. Go away. Dang. The British had a way of forcing themselves on people, let's just say that. Led by Phelim O'Neill, Catholics made rapid gains, though many couldn't help oh, themselves, and attacked and slaughtered Protestant settlers. The Irish Confederate- Porter Don Massacre, November 1641. Again, these are things you'd never hear about. Most history you don't actually hear about, or it's like sugar-coated. Companies of the rebels meeting with the English, um, flying for their lives, falling down before them, crying for mercy, thrust there into the children's... Women and children. Two things I'm noticing. The English style of writing, like there's extra letters I'm noticing with like there, um, e there's a lot of extra E's. And two, back in the, like, historically, the English were known to, like, be the ones trying to stop barbaric behavior and make things more, um, less savage and more Protestant and proper. But from history, it's literally shown that their actions are some of the most barbaric themselves. How do you do this? The Port of Dawn massacre, we've got to react to that and learn more about that. That's so and slaughtered Protestant settlers. The Irish Confederate Wars ensued, a fervid, ferocious follow-up in which the English intensified their efforts at re- Like, this could have all been solved with just representation from both sides. If you want to rule, fine, but make sure that we have a voice too. Like, we are, we have our own history, we have our own people, we have our own culture. We are a whole separate entity from the English lifestyle. So if you're going to come in, just like, blend. Don't try to strip away. It's the same thing we could say too about what we did to the Native Americans of America. We should all, we should have blended instead of stripping away. Same thing to the African Americans, blend instead of strip away. Oh man, yes, history is kind of dark. How? They sent Oliver Cromwell. The future Lord Oliver Protector Cromwell. arrived in Ireland and proceeded to mercilessly crush all Catholic resistance. Seeing his mission as one of righteous retribution, Cromwell's forces conquered- And, and that's the worst. They use their religion as like the, the defense for their actions. Helpless women and children. Again, another massacre. Not even like a, only a few years later. What at what point do the Irish stand up and start like, um, I don't know. I don't want to say fighting back because I'm sure they were fighting back. But it's like when when you're this big versus someone who's this big. How do you you know? But when do they start like giving it to the English? That's what I'm waiting for. When do they stick it to them back? 
conquered and massacred, and to this day his name brings revulsion and disgust. I am, as it should, you bastard. The war ended with hundreds of thousands of Irish deaths and tens of thousands shipped across the sea to toil in the new world as indentured laborers. So what? the Protestants maintained. Indentured laborers means slaves. What the heck? So not only do they come on over to their island, force them, kill them, do all this stuff, abuse. You ship them away and then prof make profit off of them into some other country in foreign land. History is not fun. It's actually very dark and I'm seeing a lot of similarities with what's happened to the Africans as well in America. But it was all done by the same group of people or same type of people. Thousands shipped across the sea to toil in the new world as indentured laborers. So the Protestants maintained control of Ireland, but grew nervous when the Catholic James II became King of England in What did James do? As religious tensions in Britain accumulated, the papist James's on the Protestant daughter Mary and her Dutch husband William were invited to usurp the throne in the Glorious Revolution. James maintained control in Ireland, however, and planned mm -hmm. to regain Britain from it. But in the subsequent war, James and his followers, the Jacobites, failed to defeat William's oh, forces. And you hear about the Jacobite War and Culloden and all that in, um, there's a show called, not Sassanac. What's the show called? It's one of my favorite shows with Jamie and Claire Fraser. Why am I blanking on it? If you know what show I'm talking about, let me know right now. It's on Netflix. It talks all about the, the, the rebellions and the battles and all that. And like Claire comes back from the present time back into the future to try to help the the Scots and the Irish, I guess, win and change history. Dang. Battle, uh, uh, Battle of the Boyne, 1690. So this has been like 40 years and they're still fighting. In the subsequent war, James and his followers, the Jacobites, failed to defeat mm. William's forces. And after losing the Battle of the Boyne in 1690, the Protestant dominance of Ireland was re-established. Uh. The Catholic Irish were by far the majority population, but they were mostly mm. impoverished, disenfranchised oh. peasants who were not allowed a say in the government of their own land. The miseries mm. multiplied with the time of frost, followed oh, no. by drought, which caused the Blian and Oith famine of the 1740s. That saw hundreds of thousands of Irish dead from disease and starvation. In in what were the Protestants doing to help these people? Starvation. In 1798, inspired by the American Revolution and seeking reforms, the Society of United Irishmen led another rebellion against British rule, which the British quashed before passing the Acts of Union, whereby Ireland officially became part of the United Kingdom. The Irish people, however, still lacked political rights, but thankfully a man arose to champion their cause. Daniel O'Connell, a phenomenal public speaker who, with the support of the Catholic clergy, whipped up a massive popular movement that succeeded. Like, at what point do you as a politician and not say, hello, these people are unhappy. How about we do something to appease them and make us join together and prosper together? Like, obviously they want the land for whatever reason and they want these people to be a part of, again, the United Kingdom. But like, why aren't you doing anything to make them, the people of Ireland, understand this is beneficial to them as well? Like, well, I don't understand what's, what's not, what was the thinking here? Like by force, but why? succeeded in getting Parliament to pass the Relief Act of 1829, which allowed Catholics into Parliament and scrapped a lot of old anti-Catholic laws. There you Finally, go! things were looking up Some, for the Irish Yeah, progress! Oh, wait, no they weren't. The potato had gradually attained a state of dietary preeminence in yeah. Ireland, and the country became ominously dependent on that vegetable. In eight Is that today too? Like, who, who exports the most potatoes in the world? Hopefully it is still Ireland. 1945, a disaster struck that altered the nation forever. A plant disease called blight infested Ireland's it. potato crop, rendering the cankered spuds useless for sale or consumption. It wasn't long before there wasn't any food at all to be had in many places, and hunger increased and disease set in. And all this, coupled with calamitous mismanagement of the country's I affairs, mean, saw the abhorrent advent of Ngorta Moor, the Great Famine. A million people died. Oh! A million?! And the, here are, again, the royals in their palaces and mi a million people passed. Are you kidding me?
and disease set in, and all this coupled with calamitous mismanagement of the country's affairs saw the abhorrent advent of Ngorta Mor, the Great Famine. A million people died. Understandably, emigration surged. Ships packed with iron. Yeah, at this point, peace the freak out. I am leaving. America, hey. I heard y'all just kicked the ass of the British. Let me come over there and join you. And on top of that, at this point, weren't they like giving money and land to settlers because they wanted to develop more? I would sail my ass over to the 13 colonies. But then again, how do you pay passage for you and your family and all your belongings to get all the way to America? And who's to say there won't be like rough tides or um, storms on the way there? It's a big risk. But is that better? Like even my mom, she um, immigrated from Nigeria to America because she thought leaving her home, there was a better future for her and me and my siblings in America. So she thought it was um, worth the risk. I'm sure that's probably what a lot of other Irish people thought as well. Like at this point, we just got to go. But that's sad that you have to leave your own home. And isn't that even happening today? Like with the housing crisis in the UK, like people are just leaving. Ugh. This is why, though I complain a lot about America, I feel I still feel very blessed about where I'm at. And I, I'm, I like the fact that I'm also able to look at my home and like question and understand it's not perfect. Sometimes I get comments that are like, they just shit on America all day, every day. But I'm like, have you looked into your own mirror? Have you looked into your own backyard? Read up on your own history? Like, nobody is perfect. British folks set off for Liverpool, Canada, Australia, and the United Canada? States. And today, well over 30 million Americans Shout out to Irish descent. Even and honestly, that makes me even happier because, again, America is known for being a melting pot. We embrace all different people. Um, like, everybody has an opportunity here. And I love that. Like, if you're not able to get what you're looking for or survive in your own country, uh, there's a chance in America at, for everyone. United States and today well over Australia though Americans I would never go to Irish descent even more spiders and kangaroos the Irish struggle for reforms to help fix their dejected country and over in America the Irish had not forgotten their homeland but zealously fought for Ireland and its freedom from hmm. British rule as like the propaganda? Irish themselves successfully pushed for land ownership for native farmers against yeah. their absentee landlords but no amount of reformatory signatures could stifle the cries for home rule for self-government within the United Kingdom but no such cries issued from the prosperous Protestant Northeast which loved Loved Britain and dreaded being ruled from Dublin. In any oh, so that's why the, there's a difference between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. The Catholics of the South were the ones who didn't want to be in the UK, but the ones in the North kind of adopted Protestant behavior, I guess, and embraced their representation of England. So then maybe you let me know your opinion then. Do you think it was better that they divided the country into two separate places? Huh. I didn't, I've never heard that side of it, that the people in the North actually embraced Protestant lifestyle. It was the people in the South, the Catholics, who weren't really getting what they needed. Like, again, representation for their lands or representation in government. In any case, Home Rule was approved in 1914, but delayed by the First World War. Self-government mm. whilst still being joined to Britain. We serve neither King nor Kaiser, but Ireland. Again, these are just people who love their country and love their history and culture. Head office Irish, Transportance um, General Workers Union. Again, as an American, this is like, this is the, the stuff that we love. Fight for your own country, fight for your morals and um, representation. We serve neither King nor Kaiser. And this is why I always say like on the channel, I don't really believe in monarchies or anything because you and me, we bleed the same. We're human beings. There's nothing that makes you more important, more royal than me. The only royal person that I recognize is Jesus Christ. That is literally it. There's no queen, king, or anything. Those are all just titles they've given to themselves that for whatever reason, history has upholded. But I love that we serve neither king nor Kaiser. What's a Kaiser? A prince? repulsed the radical Irish who wanted total republic independence and in 1916 the members Easter, of the Irish Republic Easter not on Easter everybody go to church who wanted total republic independence and in 1916 members of the Irish Republican Brotherhood sparked an uprising Irish in the Republican capital. the British crushed the rebellion and had 16 of the leaders including poet Patrick no, no, Pierce no, no, no. executed ah, this yeah, made yeah. them martyrs and people sympathized more than ever with the rebels and yeah. the 1918 elections saw the radicalized pro-republic party Sinn Féin score a landslide victory they soon declared Irish independence Ooh. and the British said okay fine 
Just kidding. This is history. Of course there was war. A time of fire and assassination. Finally in 1920. Bloody Sunday. I feel like we've seen that before, but I want to re react to it again. Let me know if we should do more Irish history. Bloody Sunday? It seems like there's just been literally decades and decades and decades of war and fighting for independence. This is history of- How, This costs money? Like, again, when it comes to war, you think the lives lost, the money spent, um, I guess it does open up jobs, though, because you have to develop the, the um, ammunition and such things. But we gotta check out the economics of war. Like, what all- happened and took place to even do all these wars back to back to back jesus of course there was war a time of fire and assassination finally in 1921 an agreement was reached and the finally? upshot of it all was the northeast choosing to remain in the united kingdom as northern ireland and the mm -hmm. rest gaining independence as the irish free state nice. though it was still part of the british empire and those irish who opposed the british treaty empire? said okay fine just kidding this is history of course there was war the again uh, what the oh yeah yeah if there's a treaty, but why are they still British? Or part the if you're in the Republic of Ireland, you shouldn't be considered British anymore. You should be considered Irish. Used the treaty said, okay, fine. Just kidding. This is history. Of course there was war. The Irish Civil War was won by those who favored the treaty, though they'd handily received British military oh. support. In okay. Oh. <laughs> wow. That is uh, that is wild. The fact that they got British support as well for their own civil war i i didn't catch that it was a civil war which means the irish fighting the irish gosh dang it and it was people like at that point it's just people supporting the treaty versus the people who didn't support the treaty the ones who didn't support the treaty what else did you want like you've got the independence you're separate what else did they want 1937 the free state of ireland simply called itself ireland and at last in 1949 it broke away from the british commonwealth and officially there became you go. a republic and no more british Lamas, a number of beneficial reform sorry to pause again but now i understand more why um, y'all always comment favor don't refer to the people in the republic of ireland as british or english or whatever because y'all fought freaking decades to not be titled that i respect it and i apologize deeply shout out to the irish in the republic of ireland um, and if you're in Northern Ireland, are people still happy today in modern times with being still considered um, British? And if they chose to, hey, today we want to make the land of or the island of Ireland one country again, could they? Or would the British do what they did in history and f f cause wars and fight about it? He became a republic. And under Sean Lamas, a number of beneficial Sean reforms Lamas. were introduced and the economy began seeing big improvements. Good. In 1973, Ireland joined the future EU. An economic slump EU. was followed by the Celtic so they're not a part of Brexit. of the 1990s, which was followed by a recession in the late 2000s, Dang. which was followed by a remarkable recovery and who knows what's next. Wait, the, you imagine Ireland is just like this big green grassy place with lakes and sheep. But no, they're developed. They're like a major metropolitan country, it seems. ...into the future EU. An economic slump was followed by the Celtic tiger boom wow. of the 1990s, which was followed by a recession in the late 2000s, which was followed by a remarkable recovery. Like the infrastructure is nice. In any case, Ireland today is ranked among the richest nations in the world nice! with a very high level of human development, despite the fact that those developed humans tend to drink a bit too much. Yeah, anyway. your livers, be careful. But the fact that they went from these underdogs to just being berated all the time, war after war, losing after losing, to now being some of the most... And decades of famine and um, death to now modern days being one of the top, like most profitable countries. A success story, if you ask me. Shout out to the Republic of Ireland. Wait, Ireland's transformation from pitiable poverty. That's what I just said. Pecuniary profusion really is astounding. That's and what so I just said. The achievements of the Irish people who, while they've done some great. Who are these people? Oh, Conor McGregor is Irish. I don't know the rest of these guys, but I know Conor McGregor. He's very smart mouthed, sharp. I don't know if that represents all Irish people, but he is something. He's an amazing fighter too, and a very nice body. Things in say science or sport, it is in the creative spheres that the Irish have always hmm. excelled, producing some of the world's we greatest out fighters, music. as well as many musical marvels. And Ireland has won Eurovision more than any other country. As we enter into Eurovision, have y'all decided your song yet, by the way? I feel like, after this, I'll do a Eurovision video. I think we have Ukraine song out. We have, um, I think Lithuania. There are a couple songs out that we need to react to. Spain is one of them, I think, but yeah. I Ireland is actually much more like, I guess, 
there's a deeper side to island than i even realized like again they are though they're this island off the coast of europe they are still like there's so much history there and so much to learn and i feel like this video really did get, do a good job of summarizing summarizing up history from literally like 600 ad to modern times and i'm glad that they went from the um or y'all went from the underdogs of the story to like being prosperous and like having huge hopes for the future and now we have eurovision to look forward to so subscribe to me here let me know what other historical reactions i should do because i want to get more into like those um the battles he was talking about bloody sunday easter massacre this that this that so if there's specific ones or just content you want me to do on the channel make sure you comment it down below and i will be down to do it like the video because it lets me know that you enjoyed the video and help your girl get to 10k on instagram that would really make me happy so see you in the next one though bye